Hey everyone and welcome back to video four in this series where we're learning how to use Apache Spark in Microsoft Fabric. And in this video, we're gonna be getting our hands dirty and we're gonna be focusing on the Spark data frame. And the data frame is perhaps the most important part of Spark. It's kind of been an evolution in the history of Spark. It didn't used to exist, but slowly the data community have said, actually we want some data frames. And so now we're gonna be focusing on the data frame. How do we use it? How do we create them? And some important parts. What is a data frame? Creating our first data frame. And we're also gonna be talking about schemas because schemas are a really important part of Spark and data frames. So let's start off with what is a Spark data frame? Well, it's a bit like a distributed in-memory table. So it's got named columns and a schema. And the schema defines the columns and the data types for each of those columns. And it's inspired by Pandas data frames and a lot of the functionality and the code that you write will be very similar to the code that you write if you're used to using Pandas, the library in Python. So I think the best thing to do is just to start walking you through an example. Okay, so here we are in our first example and I'm gonna be walking through step-by-step step what's going on here. So really at the core, we're gonna be using spark.createDataFrame. And that's one of the methods we can use to create a data frame in Spark. Now, you might not be using this method very often in practice because there's lots of other ways to create data frames from files or from other data sets. Normally we don't create a data frame from scratch, but this just gives you an overview of the different components of a data frame. So it's a good place to start. And we can see that we've got our data and our data at the moment is a list. And within that list is these tuples. And we've got five different or six different kind of pieces of data, which are represent columns. And the other defining feature of a Spark data frame is a schema. So we can create a schema in a variety of different ways. This is the more verbose version. I just wanna show you what it looks like to do it this way. We'll look at a different way in the future as well. You'll notice that we're defining specifically what the different column types will be, what their name is here, what the type will be, and whether it can accept null values or not. And we're getting this from the pyspark.sql.types library. And so this is a pretty common piece of kind of boilerplate code that you'll see. This struct type equals this with struct fields for your each of your columns. And so when we're creating our data frame, we pass in data and we pass in the schema. And so let's just run this and see what we get. Okay, so we can see that our Spark session has been started and we've done three Spark jobs. And we can see that we've printed the schema using df.printschema. And so this is just telling us, it's kind of playing back to us what we've declared as the schema. We've got first name, middle name, last name, ID, gender, and salary. And we can also call df.show to show the first few records in this data set. So we can see the kind of the structure, has it pulled through okay, are our columns correct? And we can see that pretty much, yes it is. And so we can inspect the type of the data frame and we're gonna see that it's a pyspark.sql. So we're using the SQL API and we're using the data frame or it's a data frame object. So we have successfully created a data frame. So that's good. And I just wanted to focus on the schemas in a bit more detail. So why do we have to define a schema? Because you might look at this and think, oh, that's a bit painful, do I have to do that every time I wanna create a data frame? Well, the answer is yes and no. And there's a number of reasons for that. Every data frame within Spark needs a schema. So there's a variety of different ways that either we can declare a schema or we can ask Spark to try and infer the schema based on what we throw at it. So typically it's best practice to declare your schema because you, well, there's a number of different benefits to that. Number one, you know that the schema is gonna be correct because you've declared it. And so you're never gonna get a data type problem further down the line. Number two, and we'll look at this in uh, the next lesson, is there's also the option to infer a schema. But when we have a data set that is, say for example, you're reading data from a CSV, and that CSV has 200 columns, we can call in infer schema equals true, 
on our Spark data frame. And Spark's going to go through every single column. It's going to have a look at the data in it and try and infer the data type. And that can be quite an expensive operation, especially every time you're reading these files you've got to go through. Okay, try and infer again, infer again. So it saves us money, ultimately, at the end of the day, and time in processing power. So there is another way that we can define a schema, and it's using this data definition language, and it's a bit more readable. So this schema here is the same schema as what I've declared up here, just using a different way. So here we're using data definition language, and it does the same thing. So if I execute this one, you know, we've got the same result, and it's a bit more user-friendly, let's say. So you can declare schemas like this. Okay, so that was our introduction to the data frame in Spark. This is gonna be a really important topic, the data frame. And over the next few videos, we're gonna be doing a deep dive on how do we manipulate data in data frames. So if you like the sound of that, make sure you are subscribed and leave me a comment as well, because I like reading your comments, any feedback, any questions you've got about Spark. Subscribe if you're not already, like this video, if you're feeling generous. And like I say, the code for all of these notebooks is available in GitHub. github.com forward slash learn Microsoft Fabric. I'll leave a link in the description. That's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.